Okay, so today I'm going to do an arbitrage in uh, strips and treasury markets. So this is a zero coupon bond market in a, in a treasury note, treasury bond markets. This is actually an arbitrage out of a book that I uh, recently put on Amazon. Uh, the title is 39 Arbitrages. Uh, and uh, like I say, I published it on Amazon, which is actually pretty neat because I can price it however I want. I wanted to price it low for students at uh, like $7.99. And then uh, I can retain the copyright, which is also nice because I can then, um, you know, I have control of the material, right? So, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to go over an arbitrage from that book with different numbers and so forth. Uh, if you get a chance, you can pick up the book, but uh, if 7 dollars is too much, I understand uh, you're, if you're a student. Um, I'll probably go over a lot of these arbitrages over the next year, so, you know, uh, every week I'll pick an arbitrage out of the book and go through it. So, so even if you can't pick it up, um, you should, uh, I should have videos for you, for you. Okay, so a couple things before we jump into this arbitrage. Why, why is arbitrage important? Why would I, uh, why would I uh, write a book of, of, you know, just, which is in essence a bunch of arbitrages? The reason being, first and foremost, one, you know, I have a lot of fun with students doing these because they're like puzzles, right? So the idea is I set up, I set the stage right here, there's free money and you have to figure out how to get free money. So, so they're kind of fun and they're kind of puzzles. Uh, second reason why you should be interested in arbitrage, and I'm kind of going in order from least to most important, is uh, these are arbitrages are earned every day. So, uh, and what is, who's earning them are mainly financial institutions. So can you earn these arbitrages? Yes. Now. Can you earn them in a retail brokerage account? Probably not because transaction costs are so high, you don't have access to good data and so forth, you, you're fairly slow. Uh, but, but financial institutions have very low transaction costs uh, and they make markets in these securities. So, so this is what financial institutions do every day. So if you're interested in working for them, uh, these arbitrages are useful. And lastly, and most importantly, is arbitrage is a binding force. It's, it's the most powerful force we have in markets, and it's what links, binds all these uh, you know, various markets together, treasury bonds with futures, with options, and so forth. So uh, the idea here is if there is some markets, some things cannot be priced with arbitrage, but if they can be priced with arbitrage, then we know the exact price, right? Um, so, so that's why it's very useful to study arbitrage. So going over the, the first arbitrage here, strips. These are uh, these are uh, treasury um, uh, uh, bonds notes that are stripped apart into zero coupon bonds. So they are so they're traded. Uh, so the idea here is if what what primary dealers do. These are, these are major banks. They they, uh, they have uh, inventory of treasuries and let's say just. For example, a coupon rate on a treasury is 10%. Well, that means, and let's just say annual coupons, just for simplicity, uh, that it pays, the bond will pay $100 in interest. Well, I put 10 of these bonds together. Now I have $1,000 of, of interest every year, and then $10,000 um, uh, uh, princi uh, uh, principal at, um, uh, and, uh, at time. Uh, I forget how long I said this bond was. But the idea here is then I, I simply sell the $1,000 per year as individual zero coupon bonds. So this gives us, so these zero coupon bonds trade in the market uh, just like any other security. So what this gives us is the term structure of interest rates, the pure time value of money. I will, maybe I'll do a video just on zero coupons, but it's, it's really important for financial institutions for derivative pricing and so forth to have zero coupon bonds. So what banks do is they create these zero coupon bonds. So this arbitrage is arbitraging zero coupon bonds versus, you know, just the treasury now. So this is, again, this is, you know, you're beginning into bond valuation, how we actually get the value of a bond. So let's say, uh, to, set up, to set the stage, there's a three-year um, treasury bond that's just issued today by the uh, by the uh, uh, by the treasury. So it's three years, nine percent coupon. But because it's an issue today, also yields maturity of nine percent, right? Uh, so this is a treasury note. And for simplicity, we'll just say annual payments. So the idea of this is uh, this bond uh, will cost right a thousand dollars at time zero, uh, nine percent coupon, nine percent yield maturity, uh, and uh, it will pay $90 in time one, $90 in time two, year two, and $1,090 in year three. So let's say, all right, so we have that, and let's say we observe strip prices. 
And these are the yields on zero coupon bonds. A, a zero coupon bond, now keep in mind, uh, both of these don't have any default risk, right? So no default risk on either of these. 9% uh, in time one, 10% in time two, and, uh, and a zero coupon bond maturing at time year three uh, will be uh, yields 11%. So there's an arbitrage here, right? Uh, so how can we trade in such a way uh, that we make free money. And after we do this, I'll define arbitrage a little bit um, more concretely. So as you can probably tell, a lot of times, the nice thing about doing an arbitrage is there's two things we can fundamentally do here. We can buy strips and sell the treasury note, or we can um, sell the treasury, uh, buy the treasury note and sell strips, right? But what, you know, and, and the nice thing is if you do the wrong one, you're going to, you're going to uh, pay out money, right? So you're gonna you're gonna see you have a negative cash flow. Uh, so then you know uh, just do the opposite and you'll, and you'll receive that, that cash flow. So the idea here is if you if you were to start doing this the wrong way, you'd figure it out eventually. But uh, let, but looking at this, it's pretty clear. Um, this has a nine percent yield. This nine, ten, eleven. So I can probably get a higher yield here. So what I want to do is I want to buy strips and I want to sell the treasury note, right? So if we buy these strips, and let's buy a zero coupon bond with a, um, with a par value at, time, at year one of $90, uh, you know, uh, uh, another zero coupon bond uh, with a par of 90 and maturing in two years, and then year three, another zero coupon bond with a par value of 1,090. One thing to keep in mind, sometimes you can say, well, you can't buy a treasury strip with a, uh, that, uh, with a $90 par value. That's true, but again, these are for simplicity in general. Uh, if I were doing this, I would do it for, um, uh, you, know, if I, you know, for a financial institution, I'd do this for 100, right? So then this would be 9,000, right? So um, the, I, the idea here is I, I, would, I would do this in, in large multiples, right? So I, I might do this for like 50, uh, 50 bonds and so forth. So, so the idea here is we're just doing that for one bond, but in reality, you would do it for for uh, for many, right? We can turn this into just 10 would be 900, 9,000, 90,000, uh, so forth. All right, so now I've done the calculations here. So let's, so what this is gonna cost me today, so what I wanna do is see, figure out what this is gonna cost me today. So the idea here is um, I need to discount, uh, let's do $90 at 1.09 over one year, and that's going to be, uh, 82.57, 82.57. Then uh, two years at 10%, so this will be uh, $90, 1.1 squared, which is going to be, so the price today of this, the zero coupon bond returning at time two, will be 74.38. And then the zero coupon bond with a 1,090 par value uh, maturing at time three, this is going to be 1090, uh, 1.11 to the third power, and this will be 796.99. 796.99. So the, to buy all of these today, the total is going to be 953.94. So if I want to buy all of these, right, uh, this is going to be 953.94 dollars. 953. So now, let's look at our cash flow. So the idea here is I want to buy these zero coupons and I'm going to sell this treasury now, right? So let's look at, uh, I'll keep this time one times two times three, right? So now actually I can kind of keep that and change the signs. So let's say that this, this is my treasury note here, right? I'll just put a T for my treasury note. And this is for my, well, I'll put a Z for the zeros, even though it's the strips. Um, you know, these are my zeros. Uh, so if I sell this, I'm going to receive $1,000 at time zero, and then I'm going to have to pay 90, pay 90, pay 1,090. And then for my zero coupon bonds, I'm going to have to pay 953.94, 953.94, and then I'm going to receive at uh, 90 at time one, 90 at time two, and 1,090 at time three, right? So the idea here, uh, this, uh, so now 
this is what I, you know, this is the cash flows from shorting the treasury bond. This is the cash flows from buying the three zeros. So now I can net the two. 1,000 minus 953.94, what is this going to be? $46.06, right? And then these net to zero, zero, zero. And so this is my arbitrage, right? Uh, I trade in such a way that I receive $46.06 immediately, and then all my cash flows thereafter uh, net out to zero. So when we say arbitrage, what we mean is we don't mean um, you're getting money risk-free, right? You could just buy a treasury and that's money risk-free, right? So the idea uh, of the, the components of an arbitrage is uh, you trade in such a way that, uh, that, you, that you receive money uh, with no probability, uh, uh, it, it takes no investment of your own and you have no probability of loss. So the idea here is, no, we didn't have to use any of our own money. Right? It's not like I had to invest $1,000 and then I earned 90 bucks, right? That's just earning the risk-free rate. What we did was I just simultaneously shorted this and bought this and I popped $46.06 out of the market, right? Didn't require any money of my own uh, and then cash flow, there's no probability of loss, right? Uh, so this is, this is a proper arbitrage. Now, again, is this possible? Yeah, this is how uh, this happens every day. This is this, uh, this, this links the treasury prices to the zero coupon uh, prices. So you can go out if you can get some prices for zero coupons. Uh, again, these has to be zero coupons that are on strip apart treasury security, so no default risk either. Uh, but you can see that the treasury note and the uh, zero coupon bonds will not allow you to do this. So the idea of this is, um, now, you know, and I think I, I leave in the, uh, um, so there's, there's a couple ways in which, uh, so what we're saying is like, again, this, uh, we shouldn't find this in the market, but again, the reason why we can't find it is because banks are earning this. There gets to be a little deviation and a bank earns it and, 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 and sort of gets rid of this possibility. So the question is, what would have to change in our scenario here such that there is no arbitrage? And there's a couple different ways that things can change, but the most obvious thing that could change is this treasury price is uh, well, 953.94, which would mean the yield to maturity on this should be, you know, so solving for the yield to maturity here, the yield to maturity uh, were 10.88%, right? So that's how um, the treasury bond could adjust such there's no arbitrage. So if the yield to maturity on this was 10.88%, then the bond price would be this, uh, this arbitrage would be zero. Now, what also could adjust is the term structure could, could adjust, right? So, so in other words, um, you could probably uh, figure it out pretty easily, but what would the term, you know, what we had was 9%, 10%, 11%. How would that have to change such that there is no arbitrage? Uh, you, could, you could probably figure that out, but think about it. You could figure it out pretty quickly. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, so the zero coupon uh, rates could change, the, the term structure could change, or, or simply the bond price could change uh, such that there is no arbitrage. However, if the, the bond pr if, if the term structure is what it is, and the bond price is anything different from this value here, so the idea here is if this, the bond price was 980, now I still have an arbitrage. If the bond price was 900, I have an arbitrage, right? That arbitrage would go in a, go in a different direction. Um, uh, uh, meaning, in, in that case, if uh, the, you know, then if this was 900, I would, I would buy this and sell this. Uh, but but you can see that the, this is you know a, a normal arbitrage scenario with the yield to maturity at 10.88 percent. Good. I think that's uh, I think that's it. Excellent. So like I said, um, this is a, a similar, like a very similar arbitrage, just different numbers and so forth, is in this book. Uh, if you get a chance, check it out. Otherwise, I, you know, I'll try to do, you know, an arbitrage generally out of this book every week and post it uh, to post it online. Have a great, uh, have a great afternoon.